welcome back to the history of the Jewish people between 420 BC and 100 CE. This is a 10-part video series by Susan Harris. This is part two, the Greek rule of Palestine. If you look at the Greek rule of Palestine, let's look at a brief timeline. From 336 BC to 160 BCE is the time we're in, uh, investigating in this video. From 336 to 323, Alexander the Great conquers Asia Minor, Persia, Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. Beyond that, he goes to the Indus and toward China and conquers a great deal of the known world in that area. He might have gone to China, but ran through so, some problems getting through some valleys. However, he dies on the return uh, uh, from, the, uh, from uh, the India regions. And in 423, uh, the, general, uh, the general split Alexander's empire, and it settles with Antigonus in Macedonia and Greece, Ptolemy in Egypt, Sucleus, Nectar in Asia Minor, Syria, and Persia. Now, from 300 to 170 BCE, Ptolemy's descendants rule Egypt and the Syrian province. Uh, in 169 to 178, Antiochus invades Egypt, and in 168, the Romans eject Antiochus Egypt for, uh, for from Egypt, and after that, his Antiochus IV or Antiochus Epiphanes actions within Judah causes the Maccabean revolt, and Judas Macca Maccabeus conquers most of Judea, although there is um, some reconquering by the Sucleids, and eventually we will cover that in the next presentation. Let's start with uh, something you may have seen as part of Paul's, uh, the history for Paul's second missionary journey and Antioch is that Alexander the Great wins against the Persians in the Sicilian plains. That's the plains between Tarsus and Antioch. His troops uh, come in from the north to Asia Minor down through the Tarsus Gate and uh, fight the Persians uh, in the plains and then go on to Antioch. Uh, it, this gives them control of a key ba battle. Now, when Alexander's uh, general split this area, Antigonus has the area in Asia Minor, Seclusius has all the uh, area uh, in Babylon and Persia and in this valley. But Ptolemy and uh, Agnes' uh, border is in the Syrian area. So of course, we're going to have two dynasties who are going to battle for that border area. Now these dynasties are amazing in their names. You have Ptolemy 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, uh, six, seven, and eight, and you have uh, Seclitus and Antiochus uh, being one of the major names for the Seclidian dynasty. So if you look at these dynasties, many of the kings will pair off time after time, and in some areas one dynasty will be ready for it, the other dynasty maybe it's a young a uh, person who's uh, ruling or the regents are ruling during the attack. So let's look at what happens for the Jews and then look at the wars again. Well, Alexander the Great let the Jews in Babylon and Media have their own laws and allowed Jews to join his army and even gave them their rights within, uh, for their own culture within uh, and religion within the, his army. The Samaritans and uh, returning exiles were were accepted, and uh, there was a, a difficulty at Shechem at Mount Gezer, uh, and uh, this 
when Samaria fought against the Macedonians, then Mount Gizer became Gizer became the place for their temple. So the Macedonians actually changed this, and if you remember uh, when the woman at the well says we worship at Mount Gizer versus Jerusalem, you will see that that the original uh, temple in Samaria had been destroyed by the Macedonians. Now the Ptolemies rules were hated and loved. Some desired to serve in the army of the Ptolemies and some uh, uh, foes uh, of e Ptolemies were sent to Egypt as slaves and there were garrisons in troops in Judea to protect against those foes. That's it's described in Antion and Antioch. Um, Ptolemy made sure that slaves had to be registered and taxes paid, or if you didn't register your slaves, you had to have 600 drachmas paid. Now, Antiochus Negus, which was a much later Antiochus king, was uh, due as the welcome given his uh, army in Jerusalem. He provides for the returns of Jews from foreign foreign countries, he contributes to the rebuilding of the temple and gives uh, animal and grain for sacrifice. Uh, this is part of the same thing that Ezra did under the Persians, so uh, this is a res showing respect that for the gods. Now the Syrian wars occur about uh, throughout this time period and you find the first Sir Syrian war has Ptolemy taking control of Syria. And the second Syrian war sees Ptolemy's grinding ground in Sicilia Pamphyl, which Sicilia remembers those key plains between Tarsus and Antioch. Pamphyl is in uh, the northern part of Asia Minor, and I. Uh, Ionia is along the sea coast. There's a battle of coast which is won. Then in the third Syrian water war, it really becomes an interaction because the Antiochus and uh, the Ptolemy's head won and then the two uh, wives fought over the place. And you see the battle of Andros. The fourth Syrian war had Antiochus uh, the Great, who tried to take over East Syrian Egypt, but put Ptolemy four winds. We have that in the Battle of Rafka as a sea battle. And then you had the Fifth Syrian War, where Antiochus III attacks Egypt. The Romans in 200 BC informed Antiochus grain must flow to Rome, so please do not impact that. Uh, Ptolemy IV's filimentary regions declare war on Antiochus IV, and the regions are overflown, and Antiochus IV is told by Rome to make peace so the grain may flow. If this sounds like an adage from a movie, uh, that is the same thing, the grain must flow. Now let's talk about the sea battles. The Second Syrian War Battle of Kos was about 261 or 255 BC. Antiochus Ptolemy and Antias battle on land and sea for control of Syria, and the Battle of Kos is a sea naval battle that allows Antiochus to win this war. But at the same time, land battle rages on Syria, some of which may have been done with elephants. Now, the Third Syrian War, the Battle of Antras, uh, was a key battle and fought at sea, but the land war was fought in Syria. In the Battle of Andros, Ptolemy loses to the Macedonian and loses the Cyclasian islands in the Aegean Sea. So you see he's losing part of the Greek winds there. Uh, the Egyptian fleet is commanded by Sophron of Ephesus and the Macedonian fleet winner is Antigonus Gonus. Now the Battle of Raphia near uh, Gaza was on the uh, land, and there you had Antiochus elephants routing Ptolemies uh, and uh, an attack of Ptolemies left. Uh, 
the Ptolemy uh, drives back the whole wing and takes control of the phallax, which is the Egyptian phallax, uh, with Macedonians, and they drive it out. This is the first time that the Egyptians were trained in the Greek phalantix, uh, which was the long uh, soldiers. Uh, the fifth Sicilian war was the Battle of Pantium. It was located near Mount Hermon, uh, near Pantius, or Cis which became Caesarea Philippi. Uh, it was about 200 BC or BCE. The Euclids uh, had Antiochus III. The great Ptolemies had Sopus of Antiola as the general. And the winner was the Sucladian army. Antiochus III was a tremendous driver of the army. In the end, it ended with the Ptolemies of Egypt uh, ruling in Judea, uh, but there might be a possible reference to this in Daniel. This, er, this um, Bantus was near a stream out in the Mount Hermes area, uh, sort of to the north of uh, Lebanon, north toward where Israel today meets with Lebanon. The Syrian War was uh, one of the last ones. This is a case where uh, the young Ptolemy, uh, six kilometer, uh, is too young to start his own war. He's still maybe six to eight. The two regions start the war. Antiochus for Epiphanes uh, takes over uh, Cyprus and Pelusium uh, at the end and is marching toward it. And the Egyptians ask the Romans for help. And the Romans tell Antiochus to leave Egypt so grain can flow to Egypt. Well, that's the brief uh, description of how uh, the Jewish people one thing I will cover in a class presentation is Antiochus Epiphanes and how he links to the Daniel presentation and then to the, to the uh, Matthew discussion and then to the Son of Desolation in Second Thessalonians. But this is just to provide you some history on what actually happened as far as the facts. Well, I look forward to talking to you again on part three during the Maccabean Wars.